Well, hello, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Joshua Jacobo, and this is the Hardlock Podcast, and we are at episode number 16 right here at also at Studios in Varadri. And of course, we are proudly sponsored by Esomat Hypermarket. Some of you want to say supermarket is all well and good. Esomat Hypermarket sells all the things you need in this world from diapers, from chocolate, from yogurt, from cakes, from whatever you need up to appliances and everything. That is where you can get all your shopping of grocery right here in the heart of Aruat. And also, if you'd like to help us and sponsor and support the show, ladies and gentlemen, in the description, go right now on the video and you will see the telephone numbers we've placed down here so that you can support the show. Or if you want to actually sponsor the show, this is your moment to do so. Also, we have Alion Z, Nafian Legason, joining us tonight on the show. And it's going to be an amazing interview. I'm very sure I can't wait for it. And uh, you guys cannot wait for it as well. He is the UG Cranes, the Uganda Cranes goalkeeper and also plays for URA as well. Well, then. Now, let's jump right into the good and down right ugly of this particular week. Now, last week, we gave you the news of Jose Chameleon's concert being postponed after his stage and equipment were destroyed by extremely heavy rains. Now, according to promoter Abi Musinguzi, also known as Abtex, Jose Chameleon received a whooping compensation of 150 million Uganda shillings from Operation World's Creations boss. That is... General Salim Saleh. Now, Aptex also claimed that Jose Chameleon got money from the Speaker of Parliament, Honorable Anita Monk, towards the very same cause. Speaking to a local television station, Aptex said, quoting, saying, uh, Chameleon, don't be selfish. You should share that money with promoter Biggie. You got the money because of the concert. The promoter also deserves a share. However, these are plenty allegations and rumors, so take them as they are because we do not have proper evidence to sustain these stories. Now, Chameleon's concert will be this particular Friday on the 24th of February 2023. Let's move on again for those who love the Super Bowl now. Last week on Monday, actually, the American football final call, the Super Bowl, went down with a pregnant Rihanna, a.k.a. Riri, putting an amazing performance at the Apple Music Super Bowl halftime show. However, Riri wasn't the only one to deliver an amazing performance. Now, probably you've not seen this or you have seen it, but American Sign Language interpreter, that is uh, Justina Miles, made history that very same night as she became the very first deaf female to perform at the Super Bowl. Now, Justina's performance alongside Riri went extremely viral, fully embracing a set list of hits as she danced and signed for deaf viewers impeccably throughout the 13 minute set. The video was viral and here exactly is the clip for you to also see as well. Finally, for those who love watching movies, here it is for you now. Fast and Furious 10, aka Fast X trailer, is of course officially out, and there are extremely big rumors over the return of Paul Walker, the late character Brian, back in the game. Now, Walker tragically died in a car accident in 2013, midway through filming over Fast and Furious 7, and uh, he hasn't been featured in the franchise ever since. But his character remains alive in the world of the films. Now, Walker's character was briefly seen in the Fast X trailer during a flashback, but the director says that Brian O'Connor won't appear during any scene set in the franchise's present day timeline. This would mean that Walker will not be recreated using a CGI, the very same technology that you was used for his send-off in Fast and Furious, uh, that is seven. Now, however, good news for you is that Aquaman star, that is Jason Momoa, is staring in the franchise. Now, it was already confirmed that Momoa had joined the cast as a villain in the next installment. But this is the very, very first time fans will see the man in action as the trailer primarily focuses on the intentions of uh, the actor. First X 
will be released officially in the U.S. on the 19th of May 2023. And I don't know for us when it will be released for us to be able to watch it. And those are the stories we have for you this particular week. My name is Joshua Koko, and this is the Handlock Podcast, episode number 16. And we have tonight the man himself, Adion Z. Nafian Legas for the interview. But before we get there, let's watch a few clips of the man himself, Legason, in action. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us one more time. My name is Joshi Joshua Koko, and this is the Hard Dog Podcast, episode number 16. And we are also at studios and proudly sponsored by Exomat Hypermarket. Now, you've just watched a small clip of the man himself, that is Alionzi Nafian Legason, aka Ajaib. And ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to invite the man himself, Legason, in the building. Bakaribu. Uh, or for Joshua. Mm. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for those who don't know this guy, um, Nafian Legason Alionzi, aka Ajaib, is actually a goalkeeper for URS since 2016, July, and uh, he also plays for the Ghana Cranes. And also, he was born on uh, March 2nd, 1996, in Adjumani. Before joining Uganda Revenue Authority, uh, Alionzi played for Arua Best uh, pre Uganda Premier League team that is on Doparaka FC from 2014 to 2016. And he joins us now for an amazing exclusive interview right here. Uh, thank you, Josh, for hosting me. I really feel glad and happy to be here with you. Wow. It's been long from primary yeah. <laughs> since we shared together. Yeah. Yeah, you're my hobby, so I will always honor you, all yeah, your invites. Man. Back in the days, hello. We, we shouldn't tell them when we went to school because when we tell them, they say, "Oh, those guys are kids." I'm telling you. This is a few years ago when he said with this guy. We shared the same classroom at some point. Now, the last time I saw you, actually, you, you really, you were a big boy, gained a lot of weight. Now we talked about this earlier, man. You've lost a lot of weight. What's going on? Are those um, our Kampala people not treating you well? Should we get you back here? What's going on? <laughs> we're worried. Uh, for weight, <laughs> when you're in your adolescent age you don't mind so much you have less stress yeah. but as you go on playing football taking yeah. football as a career yeah. you'll have to be limited yeah. that uh, there's a certain weight that carries you oh. that, which makes you at your very best uh, period let's say the weight that can make you be at your top, at, at your top yeah. performance oh. yeah. yeah 80 kilograms works for me very uh, well i feel horrible i'm 97 mm. kgs <laughs> maybe if you are playing football you would be fined every every month wow you'll be paying wow this is horrible you were born in uh Adjumani. some people say this guy is a madi others say this man is from Aivu. others say this man is uh, an aringa now we want a certain tribe to finally get a hold of you and say you know what this is my guy where are you from I was born uh, in Ajumani. Mm. I'm an Aringa. Wow. I was raised by the Aivu from Arua. Wow. So I've cut across so many years. So I belong to West Nile. Mm. Yes, mm. yes. So you are ours, all of us. Yes. Wow. So you've got a nuclear, but it's an Aringa anyway, in real sense. Now, you are actually in Arua because last week you played a game against Ondoprak FC, URA and Ondoprak FC. Yeah? Yeah. And uh, the game ended 2-0. Uh, in favor of uh, URA, of, of course. URA, of course. Now, 
for you at this point, how difficult is it to play a home team one, also a team that you've been playing before? How difficult is that? Is it easy? Is it difficult? Uh, I can't say it's difficult or easy, but what is there is the purpose. Mm. You, me as a footballer, mm -hmm. mine is to deliver. I'm working, I'm employed yeah. with the URA, so professionals, <laughs> must work. <laughs> oh. I come to do my job. Uh, of course, people, some people get bitter that you are at home, you have to uh, be lenient. <laughs> it, it's not that. It's come on, really? It's automatic and yeah. your mind tells you by default, you're not supposed to do this, you're not supposed to concede. Yeah. So why would I just concede because someone is telling me to concede? Because they feel you're still part of them, you know? No, 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 no. Yes, me being part of them, I'm also an ambassador. Yeah, I, yeah. I know when I reach the Uganda cranes, they say, they pray for me, they say, I wish she doesn't concede, we yeah. wish she performs better. So yeah. how is how am I going to reach uh, the you, top level when you, here I'm not serious? Ah. So I have to do my job. But also forward, forward drum at least, you're part of us still anyway. I still, yes, I gave you the joy, I gave you the trophy. <laughs> so I think I've done my part as well <laughs> but seeing our home side struggle is not something to laugh about yeah it's so saddening and we hope they bounce back in case we meet them again of course i come for a win i'm i'm paid to do what i'm doing there will be a time where i'm going to ask you about um actually uh, something about the home teams here how we can improve and make it better but before you get there in 2020 uh you were among us the, uh, the people that were actually called by the south sudanese um national team to go and play for them and uh yet you're a non-citizen there were so many other people but for you you're like you know what i'm going to think about it and uh, now looking back at that time and now where you are now tell us about the experience how difficult was it to make that decision and everything yes uh, it's true that i was once mm. summoned by the sudanese national team yeah of course that was a a, a pleasure to me to be recognized by a foreign country. It was a great privilege showing that what I'm doing is right. Was it South Sudan or Sudan? S South Sudan. Ah, okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, where Toha is playing and yeah. so on, Rashid Toha. Mm -hmm. For me, I felt uh, uh, humbled and honored to be invited and to be someone. Yeah. My decision to stay and play for Uganda yeah. was not soccer related. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. I sat down, I was like, Nafian. You started in Uganda. All your papers are Uganda. Yes. Yeah. So again, you know how our country works. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I go and serve Sudan somewhere, yeah. and yeah. yet I was raised really? and nurtured yeah. from here. I mean, maybe I would have betrayed them, but so I had to sit down and sit back, mm. say, let me be patient. Yeah. Whatever is meant for me shall always be mine. Were there rumors that you were going to be called to the national team already by that time? The first time I was summoned in the national team was in 2016 when I was with Ondo Paraka. Ah. I was also summoned uh, to play for the under 20. Yeah. Of course, that sometimes no, no, sometimes yeah. when you are dropped, uh, I shouldn't say maybe the coach hates me and so on. You cannot have everything. There are weaknesses. <laughs> you must accept you yeah. have coming. Yeah. And you. It's a learning process. Yes. You know? Now, this is a big moment for you right now. Um, you've seen you do a lot of amazing stuff for Uganda Cranes now and also for URA. I might not, personally, I may not be the biggest fan of football, but I at least follow a lot of what you do. And I'm looking at you shining in a period where uh, Onyango, our very amazing goalkeeper, actually retired already. And now you're here and you're doing an amazing job so far, doing fantastic work. Do you by any chance feel the pressure from uh, the public weighing you against Onyango because he was the captain, he was given a lot of accolades for doing an amazing job. Do you feel that kind of pressure because now you are an assistant uh, captain actually for the team? Is that kind of fitting in his shoes? Do you have that pressure? I am an assistant captain for the local uh, team that is the local based uh, players who are playing uh, within Uganda. Yeah. I can't say I have the pressure. Mm. Because I feel I'm um, doing what I've been doing yeah. and what God has given me. Mm. Sometimes when you are progressing, you don't realize that you are going forward. But yeah. people yeah. will always come with their says and say uh, this and that. Whatever has put on Yango there, he's leaving his legacy and he has really done some and tremendous you're job. Write, you're writing yours already? He's one of my inspirations and I look up to him. Yeah. He advises me on other uh, football-related grounds and yeah. so on. <laughs> so... Uh. I take him as a, 
uh, reference, yeah? yeah. I learn from him what, what has put him there, motivate, yeah. Motivator. So uh, I can't just jump in. I have to get prepared for that. Yeah. Yeah. So it takes time. It won't just come uh, because of one performance or two or three. Yeah. It takes a lot. <laughs> it I, think, a I think a lot of people are starting to judge you from one performance that you did recently, which we'll talk about later. But from the general public, especially now, uh, we're looking at you. You are the cranes, you're gonna cranes. Uh, at this point yet, but do you feel the pressure of, you know what, a lot of Ugandans are starting to look up to me to make sure that I don't concede goals. Do you have, do you feel there's a pressure from the national team, all of us from Uganda? First of all, I have to consider what has taken me there. Mm. It wasn't pressure from people that has taken me this far. Yeah. So people will say whatever they say and uh, I can't take it as pressure yeah. because I know myself better. <laughs> yeah. I know myself better. I know what works for me. Mm. What is just there is to keep working and ignore the public, ignore whatever I say. The noise, you know, focus. Because when you do good, everyone is with you. Yeah. When you do wrong, <laughs> one wrong, people turn against it. So yeah. wow. it's all about me. It's yeah. all about what I need and the targets I have. Mm. Being what the, best, I'm the best also for you at least, but not for anyone. Yes, but having in mind that there are hurdles. Yeah, yeah. Oh, in, in where, uh, and this is awesome. The journey I'm taking. I love the perception you have towards this thing. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, for those who don't know this guy, if you're not a football fan, this is one of the biggest of all times in this country. He knows what he's doing. He's the big, he's the goat so far for many Ugandans. And we hope that he's going to even be a bigger goat in the future. Now, last month on January 18th of 2023, you saved an amazing penalty kick by Czech Sidibe during the total uh, energy turn 2022 games against African giant Senegal. And this was a big deal for all of us. Now, let's quickly look at the clip just and then I'll get back here and then we'll ask the question. Let's go. Uh, the Ugandan defense, the call and shout coming through from the goalkeeper. And penalty it is! Oh, I wonder what could have happened there. And a good save by Allianz. Well, it's setting out to be deja vu for the Senegalese. Second cross in the box. And Uganda have taken the lead here. It's the captain, Milton Carissa. Against the run of play, the cranes of Uganda have taken the lead here. Halftime whistle from the Tunisian match official here. It is Senegal trail 1 0 against Uganda. There you go, that is the amazing clip. You can see the goal saved by Nafian here. Man, that was one of the most beautiful things I've watched in my entire life. <laughs> I'm telling you. Sure. <laughs> yeah, to be honest with you. And so for me, the question is, at that point of time, what's going through your mind before the penalty kick, during the penalty kick, even after the penalty kick, what's going through your mind at that time? As a footballer, yeah. we all trained those things okay. that are... Penalties may come, yeah, and they will always come. Yeah, but according to you, is that the first penalty I've saved? You have ever watched me save penalties right from primary? Yeah, but uh, as a, a fan, it uh, uh, gave people morale and so on. But for me, as a player, it's what I've this been is doing. Nothing new to you. Yes, yes, wow. it's nothing new. All I had to. I uh, have in mind is that the team needs me and you'd see the pressure mm. uh, coming to our side. I had to stand uh, tall and face it. Yeah. Of course, when uh, I saved the penalty, I think it's one of the reasons, <laughs> uh, one of the efforts that yeah. gave us the win. Yeah. Uh, players gained confidence and got motivated. nobody now saw a goal going in the back of our net. Wow. So we had to now start pushing the Senegalese back. But, but for you now, that, that is so brilliant. At, at that point of your life, um, do you notice that you're actually doing all these beautiful, amazing things? Or for you, it's a daily routine work. You're going to work, get done, and move on. Before seeing me as a, a great player or as a player, yeah. you must see me as a human being. Yeah. And so that's how I take myself. I, uh, I am not overwhelmed by all that I know. So uh, all I want to do is uh, uh, be a point of reference. What are people learning from me? Yes. So is it positive and so on and so forth? That's it. Uh, football, in football, they say you are as good as your next game. So should you mess up in the next game, your value drops. So your focus must be now, yes, but future is almost more important. Yes. Wow. Because... Wow. 
Every day new talents are born. Every day they are upcoming footballers. You see kids are really yeah. pushing out the old guys. So you have to keep improving. The football world is changing. What is new that I'm lacking, yeah. it's what you have to look up to. Now, that time, many of us Ugandans and uh, many football experts, and uh, particularly that night, Kenneth uh, Semakula was actually given uh, the Man of the Match uh, award for that particular game. But all of us felt like, you know what? I think this should have been a dive, really, at the end of the day. Did you feel that too? Did people call you about it? And uh, how did you go about it? So many people told me, many called me, many wrote about it. Yeah. But as a player, yeah. you can't do it alone. Football is a team sport and... No, but man of the match is a single person in the world. It's not for the whole team. Yes, but it's for your performance. Remember, you yes. performing, you can't perform alone. Exactly. It's a chain. Yeah. You work as a team. Mm. Uh, maybe I saved maybe two balls, I saved three. They defended the fifth and the fourth, yeah. the sixth. What if they all went in? I don't think I would still stand a chance. Exactly. Exactly. So what is there is that... Uh, I'm not moved by individual awards. Mm. He deserved it because he, he already has the award. Yeah. And there's nothing you can change about it. Of course. He really played his part uh, as Semakula. He really uh, uh, took over the midfield, gave us the power, won balls. He's younger compared to me. Recently played at the Afcon under 20, mm. uh, which went up to the finals. It's and a good lost. motivation for him anyway. Yes. So all I can do is to support him mm. and say, yeah, Man, you did great. There will be a day when it will be mine, and yeah. I know you'll also be great. <laughs> that's also awesome. That's a very positive way of thinking. Yes. Um, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Joshua Jacoco, and I'm speaking to Ariyonji Nafian, a.k.a. Ajay Legason, and this guy is uh, the goalkeeper of the Uganda Cranes. That is the, uh, the national team. And also, he plays for URA as well, and before that, he was playing here with us on Dufaraka FC. Now, let's talk about you playing so many big teams now. Senegal was only one of the teams. But I've won, you've played a lot of games. Ivory Coast, you've played against, games against Ivory Coast. You've played games against Algeria and so many other amazing games. Uh, my question for you is, until now, so far, what do you think is your most defining moment in football so far in your career as of today? Uh, for me, I value moments yeah. depending on stages. Yeah. Like, what first made me to be identified as a footballer in West Nile. Yeah. <laughs> that was when uh, I was still in Arahil Primary. So it was penalties. When I saved uh, a penalty, was it against what? We won the game, uh, the trophy. Yeah. That was in 2007. I was still in my primary five. Five, yeah. Primary five. You remember very well. You have a strong memory. So. <laughs> so I reached uh, a raw public secondary school in my uh, senior one. Mm -hmm. I saved penalties against Timvara secondary. <sighs> Wow. Uh, and our games uh, teacher told me, this is the moment the whole country must know you and the West Nile people must mm. support you and appreciate you. Yeah. So I, I didn't take it lightly. Mm. I won the trophy for Republic. Wow. I was given free education for six years, for the remaining years. Wow. But unfortunately, I left a Republic mm. and after two years mm. of my study, my studies, I went to Chibuli SS. Yeah, I remember that Before Chibuli, now. I went to South Africa. Now going to South Africa was the turning point. Okay. I was exposed. Mm -hmm. I played uh, teams like uh, Super Sports. Mm. You find wow. Nigerians. You, you get to see the uh, football world. Yeah. You meet players like Benny McCarthy and uh, 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 Blackburn. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. You meet uh, Benny McCarthy uh, was also in Porto. Mm. He's now the one of the coaches of Manchester United. Yeah. So it tells you what actually is needed outside. Mm. So wow. moving out, wow. moving out, facing that challenge and sharing with them. We met former coaches of Atletico Madrid, yeah. you know. Wow. So uh, you mix up with so many, you say, I, I must belong here. Yeah. They say, Emma, the moon such that you fall among the what? The stars. The stars yeah. So that was the target. I was like, I must reach this level mm. where Benny McCarthy is. And he tells you what you must do, the do's and the don'ts. Yeah. That can bring you up here. Yeah. You shouldn't be injury prone, manage your body. Football is a game that tempts a lot. 
they will attract <laughs> good and bad. Yeah. That was S inspiration that so many lacked. Yeah. For me, that was the turning. That point. was the mom moment. You yes, said, like, wow, yes. this was awesome. Yes. I thought it was going to be the Senegal match, but it's okay anyway. But that's beautiful. <laughs> Maybe if I didn't go there, I yeah. wouldn't even be seen in the uh, Senegal game. We need to get to the end of this uh, show because I know you're a very busy guy. I don't want to keep you here for long. And uh, at this point for us, if someone asked you, Alionzi, what is next for you now? What is next for your job in this industry? What would you tell someone? As far as I'm concerned, I feel every player's dream is to play uh, professional football and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking towards that. I'm looking up to that. I'm like, I have played in the league for yeah. seven years. Yeah. What more am I adding? Yeah. Yeah. After you also years. have to judge yourself. It's like any other industry. You feel like I'm now local. I have to make move international. Yeah. Which we call pro professional yeah. football. Yeah. Or semi pro. Mm -hmm. But all I hope for is uh, that I've done a lot for the league, and I hope the next generation also learns from me yeah. as I prepare myself to move into the next stage. But yeah. all that takes preparations opportunities come to those who are prepared yeah and nobody can stop an opportunity whose time has come I agree. so should it come then i i will have to go mm. but all i'm praying for is to play at the top level that's amazing uh, now something that we talked about earlier that i know it's quite difficult for you to discuss and i'm not good i will allow you to pass the question uh, for the purposes of uh you know, for your sake of protecting your job and everything. There has been so many accusations of the national team having so much of racism, I mean of uh, tribalism, nepotism, and even maybe in URI as well. Now, tell us about your experience. Do you feel that there is tribalism, nepotism in the game of football, both in URI for now and also the national team? You know, all that depends on the people you meet or the people you come across. Yeah. In the world, you may meet people who are against, but not everyone will be against you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you landed on a bad one yeah. and say it's a, uh, yeah, there's nepotism, so and so son, there's tribalism, is from West Nile, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. If that comes, that is one of the hurdles. Yeah. So all you have to do is to jump over or leave that place and move mm -hmm. to the right place where you are, you are valued and accepted. Yeah. So that said, I don't think uh there's much of it anywhere i've gone mm. it must it I've, could be there but it's not so much it it exists but i have not come across that strong one which people say can eliminate you mm. much as people whisper as long as you don't <laughs> whisper direct to me as long as wow. you don't whisper direct to me when you tell me i also but what is so important is yeah uh, wherever you go mm. there are those people who don't yeah. value where you come from, but yeah. all the need is the service you deliver. The service is good. That is what is more important. Yes. I'm in at the national team. I'm from West Nile. And mm -hmm. they are, not everyone who should play there should come from West Nile. Exactly. What has taken me there is not my tribe, but my talent. Because at least the point that people are saying this is not Uganda crane. This is Kampala, Boganda cranes. I saw a lot of people saying those things on social media. At some point, you know, the biggest number of players were from that side. That is their view. Yeah. And uh, it's what they have said. It, it might be perception or what they see. Mm. Like, I think, not until I started speaking uh, my Aringa language, yeah. Aringa T, yeah. <laughs> people are confused. People are like, where, where does it come from? It's, it's just football that has brought us together. Yeah. Yes. This is one on one. He has told you his uh, opinion, and we need to respect it the way it is. And finally, as I let you go, Alionzi, but before I let you go, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Hello Podcast. We're also at Studios with Ajay joining us. And also, these t shirts you see here are up for grabs on sale at only 35,000 Ghana shillings. And also, my colleague here, my good friend, Nafian, is also wearing it as well. Hardlock Podcast t shirts at only 35,000 Ghana shillings. Please make sure you drop it. And also, if you'd like to support this show, please drop, uh, just look at the description of the video. Take the description of the video on YouTube, and you will be able to see how to support the show. Final question to you, Nafian, is this that currently we're facing a big challenge. You mentioned it earlier at the beginning of this interview that it's not very good to see our teams locally here going downwards one of these days. We've seen Ondoparaka is struggling so much right now. That was one of the biggest teams around, which he played for. Arahil is already here. And apart from my observation of uh, 
fans being very aggressive and sometimes players being very aggressive that is very unprofessional side of it for you in a professional section what do you think who could do better as uh, local teams to get it out there and to improve what we're currently going through our local team the management the fans have yeah. to know that uh, football is an open game yeah there are teams that are bigger brands so yeah. i say teams like kcc and we must and accept their, their, <laughs> their, their, their our elders yeah we must accept all we can do is to challenge them mm. talent wise but yeah. not the brand mm. yes and the paraka is the biggest brand i can't say in west nile yeah. right now uh, it's the first team that came before rahel yeah so what is just there is that uh, the management yes. and the fans have to prepare for the future yeah nafian can't play in, on on paraka forever we should prepare the next generation football oh, okay football you must accept is played in uh, steps and their levels yeah there's this golden generation that comes yeah will lead on donyeri is also are there the team has to sink down there's a graph for football you mm. go up and come down oh yes so oh, when yes. you're up uh, you bled when you're down concentrate yeah you know wow. that you want the rise wow this you is know? big grudges don't solve clubs problems, problems. Uh, yeah, so there, just, there's a lot of grudges going on. The fans are blaming management. Management is blaming uh, fans and all all these things. You know, all for, the politics in it. For football, that may be there, but all they must mind about is the development. Yeah, we all need both teams. We need even more teams, not yeah. only two. Yeah, schools. Have you uh, put a, a strong scouting team to look up uh, at these young players? Yeah, players are taken to schools like Chibuli and so on. I was grabbed from here. Maybe <laughs> you never know. Yeah. I would start from here. Mm. Both teams must remain. Okay. Also, remain in the league mm. as we keep fighting on. Fantastic. Now, as we get to the end of this uh, interview, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, this is episode 15 of the Hello Podcast. And now, Nafian, I want to give you an opportunity to speak to your fans because and your supporters, not only in Arua, not only in West Nile, they're all over the country. The country loves you so much. Now you're dialing to the country. Speak to the red camera on the other side and talk to your fans in any time you want. Let's go. Uh, to my fans and the people out there, well-wishers, friends, family, I just want to say thank you for supporting me. Thank you for praying for me. We are in this together, and it's because of you that I'm here. And it will be because of you that I will still remain up there. What is so important is to keep supporting each other. As I keep delivering, we pray that I keep injury free and keep up the momentum. I love you so much. I might not get the chance to meet you one on one, but know that I'm with you, and I would wish to meet all of you one on one. But all that is there is work. I have to go back and work. It's what has uh, bonded us together, yeah. and it it is what will keep keeping us together. I told you I also send your regards to, to, and also to your family mem- to your family members. We saw uh, you are visiting your mom and dad. We want to say that was a nice one, kind of them to do that. Thank you so much, and send our regards to them as Hard Rock Podcast. Say that we love them for raising a very fantastic child like you. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay. Legend, that is it. We don't want to keep this guy here forever. He's an amazing guy. He's a busy guy, but he gave us all the time in the world to sit with us and talk. And I know you've learned one or two things from this guy's story. And uh, we hope for better days ahead of us. And uh, we are probably sponsored by Esomad Hypermarket. And you can do, of course, all your shopping of grocery, all your appliances, all your foods, all your sweets, candies, whatever bread you want to get, go to Esomad Hypermarket or Supermarket in Arua Town. And that's it. Thank you so much once more for joining us. I appreciate your time, man. And I uh, wish you all the best and the safest journey back to Kampala. Thank you. Okay. We're out of here. Till we meet next time. Bye-bye.